Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. So, so far what we have is simply a listing of uh, folders in our main folder here. Okay. Now we should move things a notch higher. Now keep in mind that every time we start coding like this, you must make sure that you open your ZAMP control panel and then you start these two processes, MySQL and Apache, and make sure they are running before we can do anything. Okay. All right, so we have one index.php page here. Now, what we need to create is a routing system. Okay. So, one thing to keep in mind in terms of security, as we are going, uh, moving forward from this, is this let's say for example in my assets folder here uh, there's nothing right now but let's just add a new file in there or let's um let's open this folder shall we okay so there's the assets folder there and if i open that folder and i add a new document just a text document here for the sake of demonstration so if i go over here I'm in the public folder, right? Now, if I put assets like this and put a slash, uh, this is what I get. I get a directory listing. So you see here, there's new text document, which is the text file. Now, if this was an images folder, okay, for example, this was an images folder, I will get a listing of all images that are inside my folder. And then somebody can go in and simply uh, start clicking and uh, downloading those images. So this is not a good thing. So there are two ways to avoid a directory listing. So let's start with a simple one first. So the simplest way to do this is to put an index file here. If you notice, uh, when I go to the public folder, you see when I do this and go to the public folder without typing anything, it automatically loads the PHP page. So the uh, PHP index file is loaded automatically in a folder as long as it's found. So as long as there's index.html or index.php, those two files are loaded automatically. So we can use that to our advantage. And so here, what we'll do is if I go back to the assets folder, you see it's showing me what the contents of the assets folder are. And you can do this on a live server and it will work the same way you see an index of that uh, directory. So to avoid this, uh, let's try and add an index.php file in there. So what we'll do is in the assets folder, let's right click and say new file. And then we're going to save this file and call it index.php. Okay, so this is going to be a very blank PHP page, nothing in here is, uh, is written, right? So if I go back to this and refresh, you see that now when I try to load the directory listing, I get this empty thing. And the reason is that the index page is automatically loaded. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this acts as a security measure. Now you, it doesn't have to be a PHP file. It can be a .html. It will do exactly the same thing. So here you could put and decorate this just like we saw with the Google file where it's decorated. So here you can put icons, you can put a full HTML page if you want and say something like um, uh, access denied, something like that, okay? Access denied. So you can type anything in here. Oh, sorry, there we go. And then you get access denied, right? When somebody tries to load this part here. So that's one way to do it. This is the way I recommend you do it. Okay, but there's a much tougher way to do it. If you don't want to do this, you can put an HT access file instead. So what we'll do is let's delete the index.php page and let's come back here. And if I refresh, you still see the contents of this. And so now what I'll do instead is I'll create a new file inside the assets folder and I will <coughs> put options. This is an HT access file. So I'm going to say options. So I'm telling the I'm telling Apache because HT access files are the way you manipulate Apache to work. These are options for Apache. 
So I'll do this. So I'm telling it to remove indexes from indexing or showing the index of, because as you can see here, it says this is the index of this folder. So we're trying to stop that action of indexing there and by putting that. So I'm just going to say save. And here when I save it, I don't write a file name. I just say dot ht access. Okay. And then save it in there. So this is all it will contain. And now if I refresh this folder, you see it says forbidden. You don't have access to this resource. So you can do it in both ways, but I recommend you do the easier way, which is index.php rather than trying to manipulate Apache because that's the index.php where we work regardless what uh, server you're using because Apache is not the only server and HT access files work only with Apache. So I would recommend you put, uh, instead of HD access files, let's delete that. We put index.php files in every single folder that we make, every single folder. So um, I've saved it again in there. Now, if you don't want to put access denied, you can just leave it empty. That's fine. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to our work here. So we're going to put those index.php files everywhere in these folders, every single folder for security reasons. All right, so now let's continue with our uh, routing system. So from this now, uh, let, me, let me close that. Now our index page, like I said, will not contain any HTML. Instead, it's just going to launch the main class. So I want everything, because we're using OOP, I want everything to work inside a class. Now, you may be asking what exactly is a class? Now, if you know the basics of PHP, you know what functions are. Now, if you don't know the basics of PHP, I will uh, link a series of videos in the description so that you can follow along as well. Okay, so normally when you are uh, creating in PHP, you put a function like this and say function, maybe let's call it my func like this, okay? So what this does is that I can put some code in here Okay, just like this. So what a function does is it holds a piece of code, uh, a, a block of code, so to say, in here that will not run when I run the page. The, the, the code won't run immediately, but it will run when I call the function. So I can put some code here and then put some more code here. Okay, so more code, more code, more code. And then right at the end here, I can call the function and say my func like this. And then the function, even though the code is here, is going to run as if that code was pasted here. So that's how functions work. And then the advantage of functions is you can repeatedly call this function like this without actually having to type, retype the code uh, a bunch of times. So the, the way I've done this here, I'm calling the function twice, so it's going to run two times instead of me having to retype this code physically here. So that's a time saver. And then it, redu it reduces the amount of code that you type in your program. So in the same way, a class is like a function, is pretty much the same. The only difference is that the class holds functions themselves. So if I have a class like this, I say class, my class like this so there we don't put uh, these brackets there when declaring then in here i can put functions in there now this is a way to group functions that do exactly the same thing or similar thing into one place so that you call them at once and they work together so this class isolates these functions from the rest of the code Okay, it's a complete isolation because let's say this one is my func and that one is my func too, like this. It's a well-known thing that in, um, uh, what's this, in PHP, you cannot put two functions in a row. So if I have, let's say, let me put a function here. 
I'm going to say, uh, I'll call this one funk one or just funk like this. And then if I come down here and repeat this function like this, this is going to cause an error because you can't put two functions in the same project. It's just not allowed. So you can see this error if, let me go back to the index page. So I'm in the public folder here. And you're going to see cannot redeclare func, which was previously declared here. So it tells you exactly that you can't redeclare it on line 22. So it means I'm declaring it again on line 22. But it tells me that it was declared previously on line 20 in the same file. You see there? So it's telling me it was declared here, even though it's really there, but at least it gives you an idea. So you can't really declare it. But, so to solve this problem, I have to remove one of the functions. But uh, you see inside this class, I have this function. Now, if I repeat it outside here, I, I won't get an error. As you can see now, I haven't gotten an error because as far as the program is concerned, this function that's inside this class is isolated from the outside environment. So this is why we use classes. Reusability uh, and to what we call abstraction to put the functionality in just one class. A whole lot of functions can be in here and perform one action that at the end of the day, I won't get to, I don't even need to know how the class works. I just, I can still use it. This is how we share uh, code with other people. We use classes when we are sharing this code. It's much better to use classes than to just use functions. So uh, it may seem overwhelming now if you don't know OOP, but bear with me. We're going to do this step by step. Okay, so what I want now is to have this function called app, okay? This class, sorry. So we're going to have class app. Everything in our uh, PHP will happen in here. Now, you will notice that I do not put closing tags on my PHP files, and this is what I recommend. Do not put closing PHP tags on your PHP files like this. Only do that if you have PHP uh, inside an HTML document uh, where you have HTML. If you're going to have some more HTML here, down here, then yes, of course, you need to put a closing tag so that you can put that HTML. But if there's no HTML remaining down here or any HTML you're going to show down here, do not put the closing tag. That's because if I put the tag like this and then for some reason I put some text down here, even if it's not text, it's just emptiness like this this is going to cause a problem because this is going to be considered HTML even if it's blank like this. So this will cause you problems when you're trying to redirect the page. It's going to tell you headers have already been sent and you'll be wondering where did I send these headers? It will be here. So to avoid this problem, just remove the tag and then all this will be considered PHP. So it won't be rendered as HTML. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So this is the index page. The only thing the index page is going to do is launch the app class, that's it. So from here, we're just going to say app is equal to new app like that, okay? So this is what we are doing. We are instantiating the class. So if you don't know much about OOP, I have a series uh, on this same channel that you can check out the basics of OOP. But simply what we are doing here is we want to use this class. A class is like, um, uh, what can I say? Imagine you're building a house, right? You need a plan for that house. This class is that plan, okay? So you're creating uh, an item, but in order to create that item, you need a blueprint for that item. Let's say even you're trying to manufacture a cup, right? A cup is an object. But before you manufacture the cup, you're going to have a blueprint of that cup. You're going to design it on paper and see how it will look before you actually make the cup. And then you put your design into a machine that is going to start manufacturing uh, instances of that cup, right? 
So in the same case, this class is a blueprint. It's the design that describes an object. And then when you do this, you are manufacturing one object. So if I keep doing this, this is object two, object three, object four. So these are like separate cups that you've made from one blueprint here. So this is really what we're doing. Okay, now we've got, instead of a cup, we have an app here. And then we're just creating an instance of that app and putting it in there. That's it, okay? So this is all we would do in our index page. Let me go back here and refresh. And as you can see, nothing is showing here. But if we try to print out this, because there's a function called var dump around here, which does which shows you the details of an item, whatever uh, variable you put in there. So I just want to see what it would describe this as. So if we come back here and refresh, you see that it describes app as an object. That's what it is. So this thing is an object we've created from this blueprint here, okay? All right, so this is all we would do in here in the index page.